class is in session. Hello students, welcome back to Clever Fox Academy. I'm Professor Volpes, and today's lesson subject is science, specifically biology. Flowers are pretty great. They add a great amount of beauty into our world. They can be given as gifts to symbolize love, empathy, condolences, and more. Flowers have been on this planet for around 130 million years, and they have very quickly dominated the plant world. In fact, some experts say that flowers outnumber plants like conifers and cone-bearing trees 20 to 1. Most people are familiar with common kinds of flowers, such as roses, daisies, and lilies, but there are over 400,000 different kinds of flowers. Why don't we take a look at some of the more rare, unique, and weird flowers this world has to offer? Here are your key terms for this lesson. Flower, the seed-bearing part of a plant consisting of reproductive organs that are typically surrounded by a brightly colored corolla and a green calyx. Got all that? Then let's begin. Before we get into all the floral oddities that I found, let's take a brief look at what a flower actually is. In general, plants are classified in a few different ways. In a broad sense, they are separated into two groups, vascular plants and non-vascular plants, which basically identifies whether or not a plant uses internal vessels to carry water throughout the different parts of the plant. However, if you want to get a bit more specific than that, plants are also separated into four major classes. Bryophytes, which includes things like moss and liverworts, pteridophytes, which are more commonly known as ferns, gymnosperms, which spread their seeds using cones, and angiosperms, which spread seeds using things like flowers and fruits. This is the group we will be focusing on today, because all flowering plants are angiosperms. Like I said before, there are hundreds of thousands of different kinds of flowers on this planet, so let's take a look at some of the more interesting ones this world has to offer. The first thing we're going to look at today is a species called Montesecchia vidali, and it's rather apt to talk about this one first, because scientists believe that this is one of the very first flowers to appear on Earth. A fossil of this species was discovered in Spain in 2015, and was estimated to be around 130 million years old. Two of the members of the expedition team that discovered it, Hervé Saquet and Jörg Schonenberger, recreated what it possibly could have looked like, theorizing that it could have looked similar to a modern-day magnolia. Now, we know that flowers can come in many different shapes, so why don't we take a look at some oddly shaped blossoms? First up is the Lady Slipper Orchid. This interestingly shaped flower was giving its name because of the large shoe-shaped petal it grows. It's also rather valuable, with one cutting of it being worth up to 5,000 British pounds. Another bloom with an intriguing shape is the bat-faced cupea. Native to Mexico, this fascinating flower blooms in the shape of a bat's face, hence the name. It's also very rich in nectar and commonly attracts hummingbirds and butterflies. Continuing on with flowers that look like animals, we have the snapdragon. While in full bloom, these beautiful blossoms resemble the face of a dragon. However, things take a turn when they wilt and die. When the flower dies, it leaves behind its seed pod, which resembles a little skull. This shape led ancient cultures to believe that this little flower possessed some supernatural powers. It was thought that these flowers could protect one from deceit, curses, and even witchcraft if it were planted in their gardens. Now, in order to get energy and nutrients, flowers use a process called photosynthesis, where they convert sunlight into chemical energy. However, there are certain kinds of flowers that get most of their nutrients by eating live creatures. These are called carnivorous plants. Let's take a look at a few more well-known species. First off is the sundew. These plants grow red, hair-like tentacles on their leaves that are tipped in a very sticky substance that look like dewdrops. When an insect flies into the plant, they get stuck, almost like they were flying into a strip of flypaper. From there, the leaves then fold over and ensnare the poor insect before releasing enzymes to digest it. Next, we have pitcher plants. One way to describe a pitcher plant is a perfect killer. These plants are shaped like lemonade pitchers and are filled with digestive fluids in their basin. They produce a nectar that, when ingested by an insect, almost acts like a drug, causing them to go loopy and fall into the basin. The inside of the plant is covered in a waxy coating, making it impossible for its food to crawl out. From there, the plant digests and absorbs the nutrients from its prey. Some species of pitcher plant have even been known to catch things like frogs and mice. Last, let's take a look at the plant that most of you are probably most familiar with, the Venus's flytrap. The traps are equipped with little trigger hairs that alert the plant when something is inside of it. 
If these hairs are touched twice, the plant snaps shut faster than you can blink. Once closed, the plant secretes digestive enzymes and breaks down the bug inside. Carnivorous plants are so fascinating. Flowers are often recognized for a pleasant aroma that they can sometimes give off. But not all flowers smell so nice. In fact, this next flower gives off one of the foulest smells known to mankind. Also, it's something that some of you might recognize if you're a fan of the Pokemon franchise. Who's that Pokemon? It's called Vileplume, and it is almost a spitting image of Rafflesia arnaldi also known as the Stinking Corpse Lily. This malodorous plant is indigenous to Malaysia, and as its name suggests, smells like rotting flesh. Much like the last flowers we talked about, this flower doesn't get nutrients from photosynthesis. It's actually a parasite. These flowers attach themselves to grapevines and steals nutrients from them. This is the only way that they can survive, which makes them an obligate parasite. The stinking corpse lily is also very similar to another species known as the corpse flower, or Titan arum. Aside from both flowers giving off a terrible odor, they are also two of the largest flowers on the planet. The lily having a bloom a full meter in diameter, and the titan having a stalk known as an inflorescence that can grow up to four meters high. From the biggest flowers, let's move on to one of the smallest flowers in the world. This is called the Urumbara, and it's a very sacred flower in the religion of Buddhism. This tiny white flower only grows to be about 3 millimeters, and can grow on nearly any surface. It doesn't even need water or soil to grow. It also never wilts. According to Buddhist scriptures, these flowers come from the Buddha's realms and only bloom every 3,000 years. Its name is said to translate to auspicious flower of the sky. We can definitely consider that flower extremely rare. However, the fact that it never wilts means that you might have a better chance of seeing it than this last flower that we're going to talk about. This flower is the true meaning of blink and you'll miss it. I'm talking about the night blooming Sirius. The reason that this flower is so special is because it only blooms at night, and it only blooms one night a year. The flower blossoms on a cactus called the Large Flowered Cactus, which is native to Arizona and the Sonoran Desert. The bloom is gorgeous and produces a divine aroma. These flowers start to bloom around 9pm at night, and are only pollinated by nocturnal pollinators such as the Mexican long-tongued bat or the sphinx moth. This flower is also called Queen of the Night, and is so beloved that people hold celebrations in its honor, such as the annual Bloom Night at the Tohono Chul Park in Tucson, Arizona. Well, that's all the fascinating flowers that we're going to look at today, but believe me, there are so many more amazing blooms on this planet. Like the one that disguises itself as rocks, or the one whose petals look like snakeskin or the icy blue ones that only grow on Britain's sandy beaches. But this video could honestly go on forever, and none of us have that kind of time. Do you know of an unusual flower that I didn't talk about today? What is your favorite kind of flower? Let me know in the comments below. Well class, that's the end of today's lesson. Thank you all for tuning in. If you need further assistance, you can find me during my office hours. Your homework is to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and share your notes with all your friends. And above all, learn something new every day. Have a great day, students. Until next time, class dismissed.